Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Construction Record Podcast. I'm Digital Media Editor Warren Fry, and with me today I have uh, Dylan Desjardins, VP of Operations with uh, TCU. Uh, and TCU, maybe you should explain first off what that is and what you do. Yeah, sure. So TCU, we're a uh, we're a developer in uh, in Ottawa. Uh, we've got uh, currently over 600 units of development. We specialize in uh, uh, purpose-built multifamily uh, rental uh, products, mostly uh, new builds. Um, and, uh, you know, I've been with the company since uh, 2014. Uh, we've kind of moved our way from infill projects, progressed up towards these uh, mid-rise apartment and uh, pushing towards high-rise uh, development at this point. Uh, and one of the main reasons you're on is to talk about affordability, which of course affects the entirety of Canada, but you're sort of more concentrating in Ontario. So maybe you could explain what some of the affordability factors are nationally that affect you and then specifically to Ontario. Yeah, so um, for, for us, I mean, there's there's a lot of impacts uh, currently in the, in the, well, in the current environment. Um, past three years have been kind of crazy when it comes to the cost of construction, have been swinging up and down. Uh, the cost of labor, labor shortages, mm -hmm. how um, banks are financing, how they're uh, viewing holistically the 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 uh, the whole pro forma on a, on a project. So, um, as far as uh, like the affordability piece, um, it's you know it's getting obviously harder and harder to meet these these targets that uh, we're looking at for rental and 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 coming up with product that uh, people can actually afford, um, and that's simply based on the cost of construction. So mm -hmm. what we do to kind of push back on that is uh, we're, we always make sure that we surround ourselves with strong talent. And that kind of starts from the onset when you're, you know, vetting out a property and looking for it and trying to find the right planners for it uh, through, you know, making sure you have a strong prime consultant, strong construction manager, and all the way to, you know, either stabilization or disposition, making sure you're constantly working with these trade partners that are going to expedite the project from start to finish, right? It's going to, uh, what it comes down to is trying to minimize your carrying costs to to maximize the, or the amount of affordability that you can, uh, you can have on a project. Mm-hmm. Uh, and some, what are some of the roadblocks that are faced by developers in in, in Ottawa and, and the surrounding region? Like uh, I know the pandemic is presumably one of them. Um, and there's sustainability, which is something you have to do, but it's also an added cost, that kind of thing. Uh, what what are besides the stuff I've mentioned? What other stuff comes up? Yeah, I would say uh, a lot of it comes down to labor. Um, mm -hmm. Right now, we're we've got more projects than ever uh, being built in Ottawa. Uh, it still doesn't meet the the targets that have been put out uh, over the next ten years. Uh, we've got to ramp up quite a bit uh, in order to meet those targets, but um, that increase in construction in Ottawa is, is makes it harder for us to find, you know, the 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 good trades, the good talent that we need on site to physically construct these buildings. So that's kind of something that you really need to stick handle and and really get out in front of. So the the proper planning, you know, really early onset onboarding these people before we even break ground, before like you know months before. Uh, and get them to actually uh, work on the projects and develop it along with you. It's kind of the best way to make sure that you have that uh, that team set up and the commitment from them to actually uh, mobilize on site. I know the government of Ontario, amongst other provincial governments, is is trying to uh, get more skilled trades happening and more uh, apprenticeship happening. Have you seen any sort of concurrent benefits to that, or is it not too early to tell yet? Yeah, I think I think we're still too early in the process to really see those impacts. Um, again, like I said, is you know as we ramp this up, we're we're getting that the push pull right. If we are getting more trades uh, in in our pool, uh, we're still getting the increase in the actual construction happening. So we're we're not really realizing it on the on the other side at this point. I wouldn't say. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's just in terms of regulation. I'm based out of Vancouver, and one of the yep. things about building in Vancouver specifically, and not the city surrounding it, is that there's just way more regulations in Vancouver, and and as a result, you get a lot of towers because that's that's who can build basically. Do you find is that a factor in Ontario at all, or is it less so than probably less in Vancouver? I'm sure, but yeah, I mean, uh, th there's always been um, in Ottawa at least. Um, you know, we focus on development within the inner uh, within the city itself. We don't uh, mm -hmm. focus on urban sprawl. So uh, yes, it does push towards you know more towers that are happening. Um, and you know, you, you as a developer, you have to have strong relationships with with the city, with the council, with the community mm -hmm. in order to make sure that you have a collaborative approach to these projects. It's the it's that's your your best bet at making sure that you're you're pushing forward and getting these projects done effectively, right? So those relationships are incredibly important. Making sure that you're working with the right planners who have the right relationships with the cities, the right legal teams, what have you. That that is incredibly important um, to push that forward. 
Uh, and another thing is, and this is happening across Canada as well, a lot of what we're seeing is happening across Canada, but there's surging yeah. rental demand. I mean, you know, I know the push for the longest time was to own a place and now people are saying, okay, well, people can't even rent. What's going on here? So so what are you doing to address the rental situation? I think that's your focus, isn't it? A rental housing. And, and, and also you mentioned in a thing you sent to me about how Ottawa is the number one destination for migrating millennials who are presumably more likely to rent than anybody else. So maybe address both those things. Yeah, so that's that's always been our target demographic is uh, the millennial group. Uh, we're building, you know, uh, the units to accommodate what their needs are. Um, you know, we've got, like I mentioned, we've got uh, 600 uh, units currently in, under development. That's our target demographic for them. Uh, for them, uh, like you mentioned, it is there's a lot of pressure when it comes now to even qualifying for a mortgage. So you're now finding not just millennials, uh, but some of the older uh, uh, the older age groups are now kind of being pushed into that rental category. And mm -hmm. uh, one of the other things in Ottawa is uh, our vacancy uh, is dropping, you know, tremendously. We're down to about, you know, 1.5% vacancy rate here. So, you know, just finding uh, the, the the housing in the current market is, you know, near impossible for some of these renters. And with that increased pool, it, it becomes, you know, harder still. So um, our goal is just to, you know, get as many units out as we can to try and help uh, take care of that, that issue. And, you know, we 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 focus on um, the cost with construction, with the planning side, and like I said, mentioned the carrying cost to try and you know really bring it down to a point where we can make uh, these units affordable for people who are uh, looking to rent. I know I've talked to uh, experts on, on any number of different construction fields, and a lot of it comes down to supply chains and inflation. Is that I'm assuming that's happening with you as well? And do you see any relief on that front? Yeah, we're starting to see it a bit. Yeah, uh, for sure. Uh, definitely on the uh, the material supply side um labor we're still kind of uh, not much movement on that side but uh on material supply we're starting to be able to open up the doors to to some of the fixers and finishes that we were using uh prior to uh you know COVID and this inflation and um mm -hmm. you know you have to be very nimble uh in this current market with what selections and fixtures you're picking and, and be be ready to pivot uh you know at the at the drop of a uh, drop of a hat to uh, make sure that you're keeping those costs in line so i would say you know more than ever now you just got to have your finger on the pulse on what you're building and how you're building it uh whereas before you could be a little bit more lax and focus more on you know the design intent and and what the what the finish uh look and feel the building's going to be and I guess finally, 10 years out, how do you see this all playing out? Let's say the rental housing does kind of come to fruition, or let's say it doesn't. How do you see us navigating this current blip, which is theoretically what it is? Yeah, I mean, I think for the next, you know, uh, for the foreseeable future, at least, we're going to be seeing some uh, stabilizing in, in different areas of uh, of development. Obviously, we're, you know, we've got cap rates to consider. We've got rental rates to consider. Mm -hmm. We've got construction costs, planning, timelines with the city. You know, we've got a lot of factors that are are play a major role in this. And I think over the next, you know, couple of years, we're going to see those kind of come to a balance uh, in order for us to, you know, make these the, the performance work, meet affordability, uh, and make sure that developers are still building, right? Because as these costs go up, it just makes it harder and harder to to actually get a project out of the ground. And uh, and when that happens, you know, we're 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 being counterproductive to to hitting those uh, those targets that that Ontario and the city of Ottawa have put forward to meet uh, uh, housing demand. Okay, and finally, finally, um, if people are interested in what TCU Development Corporation is doing, where should they go to find out more? Yeah, they can go to uh, www.tcudevcorp.com. Um, you can uh, you can reach out to us from the investment side on uh, on uh, that website, uh, and you can reach out to us uh, individually as well. Happy to uh, to talk to anybody about uh, the investment in the Ottawa market. And uh, yeah. Okay, great. Thanks for joining us today. Absolutely, thank you.